Good morning and welcome. Welcome to Trinity Episcopal Church in Baytown, Texas. And welcome to this last Sunday after the epiphany of our Lord, or happy Mardi Gras, as they say. I want to encourage you um, to find our bulletin. It can be found on our website at trinitychurchbaytown.net. It is also tagged near the top of our pa Facebook page in a link to our e-news. invite you to join us as we worship our God and sing. Christ upon the mountain peak stands alone in glory blazing. Let us, if we dare to speak, with the saints and angels praise him. Alleluia. Trembling at his feet we saw Moses and Elijah speaking, all the prophets and the law shout through them their joyful greeting, Alleluia. Swift the Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God. Father. Amen. The Lord 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elijah, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elijah said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elijah and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were in Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them. And as they were both standing by the Jordan, then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted to you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father! The chariots of Israel and its horsemen, but when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 50, it will be read responsibly by half verse. The God of gods has spoken. God has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty. God is revealed in glory. O oh God, you will come and will not keep silence. Before, Before you, you there, there is, is a consuming, consuming flame, and, and round about, about you a raging storm. storm. You call the heavens and the earth from above to, to witness, witness the, the judgment, judgment of, of your people. people. Gather before me my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and seal it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of your cause, for you alone are judge. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson is from the second letter of 
Paul to the Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John and led them up on a high mountain to part by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He, he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and the cloud, from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. And they were coming down off the mountain. He ordered them not to tell and no one about what they had seen until the, after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Hallelujah. of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Today, our society, at least in word and card, is mindful of love. And beloved, one of the most extraordinary gifts of love we can give to one another is the gift of listening. This gift will not cost you any money or a trip to the store, and it did, but it does require conscious and intentional effort. For when we listen, truly listen, with the whole of our heart and face and being, it is an act of love. And when we don't listen, or aren't listened to, well, we know what that looks like and how it feels. Can you think of a time when someone was distracted or just kept interrupting you when you were speaking or, or responded in a way that did not acknowledge what you said? How does that feel? Now think of a time when someone was distracted Right? As I just said, but let's think about that. Kept interrupting you when you were trying to talk about something important. 
you know, and, and the examples are not only out there if you're paying attention to the national news, but there are examples that are closer to home, too. The time when you're talking about something important uh, to your loved one and you turn around and you realize that nobody else is in the room. Yeah. Or, or when you're in the Zoom meeting and you share an idea and the meeting just keeps going on and then someone else explains the exact same idea you've already shared. Or when you're in a conversation together and the other person say, is saying, uh-huh, mm-hmm, yeah, uh-huh, all right. And all the time they're checking their phone or, or, they're, or they're cooking or they're daydreaming and you realize you were just wasting your breath. You know, when the phone is out at the dinner table or the computer is open on the bed. How does that feel? Small? Frustrated, perhaps angry, resigned, unworthy, diminished, all of that and more. And then when we look into the mirror and we see the log in our own eye and we pause and we quiet our mind and examine our heart and we realize, ooh, I too fall short of listening. And so as I listen to our gospel reading, the message of the gift of listening resonates. In part, because in this transfiguring, epiphany, mountaintop, extraordinary experience, there is also in some ways a very ordinary human example of what happens when we ain't listening. So imagine this with me once more. Jesus takes up Peter and James and John up to this high mountain by themselves and is transfigured before them in dazzling, extraordinary white. And the law, Moses, and the prophets, Elijah, appear and are talking with Jesus. And instead of being speechless, or, or taking it all in, or, or falling to his feet, or removing his sandals, or something that indicates that he is focused intensely on the conversation before him and not the one within him. Peter exemplifies our human condition, and he does what humans do. Peter blurts out. Absorbed in his own thoughts, speaking before others are finished, interrupting the transfiguration with unsolicited advice. Our scriptures tell us he did not know what to say. And it seems that the practice of being quiet or completely present or, or listening w was just not what bubbled up in the moment for Peter. And then it takes what might have been the voice of God Almighty saying, This is my son, the beloved, listen to him. Whew. Wow. Now, we, or at least I, might like to think that, you know what, I would have chosen the better part. You know, like Mary did later. I would have listened. I, I, would have, I would have paused and been present and examined my heart and known what to act. But would I? Would we? How do we act just like Peter did with one another? And at times even with God. How might our relationship with God and with each other be enriched? with more mercy and grace and love if we were to practice listening. Listening in a way that recognizes that each and every one of us is a beloved son or daughter or child of God, worthy of our attention and the ear of our heart. St. Benedict of Nursia, southern part, modern Italy, 
is a fifth century monk and founder of monasteries of monks who live together under a rule to follow. And the rule of St. Benedict was written so that this community might grow in love of God and love for their neighbor. And that whole rule starts with these words. Listen with the ear of your heart. Listen with the ear of your heart. Beloved, listening to one another with the ear of our heart is one of the most extraordinary gifts of love that we can give to God and to one another. It doesn't cost any money and you can't pick it up in a store. It takes intentionality and action. I want to share with you another example, and this one is brought to my mind by a dear friend, Sister Miriam Elizabeth of the Order of St. Helena. And this one comes not from some 5th century manuscript, but from my very favorite part of the news, the comics. In particular, this one comes from the comic Rose is Rose by Pat Brady. And in this comment, comic, <laughs> Rose is the mother of a toddler, and Rose is usually fairly cheerful, but she owns the range of all of her emotions, and sometimes she even sees herself as a biker chick, free of her obligations. But in this particular comic strip, Rose is just busy folding what I imagine to be the never-ending mountaintop of laundry. And the toddler she has is trying to get her attention. And so without turning around, Rose says, what do you want to tell me, Mimi? I'm listening. It should be noted that Rose is still very much facing away and folding laundry. And the toddler says, whole faith listening. And Rose puts down the laundry and she turns around and she gets on level with her son, her beloved, and she focuses in and says, okay, I'll whole face listen. And there is, of course, in this comic strip, a heart over the top of the toddler's head because beloved, we children of God feel so loved when someone listens with their whole face or with the ear of their heart. And we have a God who listens with the ear of the heart, not only hearing the cries of the oppressed and the weary throughout the years, but also the emotions at the core of our stories, just as God recognized the fear at the core of Peter up on that mountain. And we have a God who brings God's whole face down to our level in great humility through the incarnation of Jesus Christ. God listens with God's whole face, with the ear of God's heart, and invites us to listen to one another. The season of Lent begins soon, and often, as our part of the observance for Lent, we either give something up or we take something on as a healthy practice or discipline in order to bring us closer to God. And this year, I and others are joining together through the Living Compass devotional and doing a little bit more of both in focusing on listening. I want to invite you to imagine for yourself the transformation when I try to give up the tendency to interrupt, the need to steer conversations back to myself, multitasking or being distracted when someone's speaking to me, the need to give unsolicited advice or answers, impatience when someone's telling a story or relating an experience, 
or formulating my own response before someone else is done speaking. Imagine the transformation if that's what we are intentional about giving up. And also imagine for yourself the transformation when I intend to take on being more comfortable with silence. Being completely present when someone is speaking to me. Listening to understand rather than to respond. Being genuinely curious about what someone is telling me. Listening with the ear of my heart and the whole of my face. And taking more time for prayer and meditation so that I can quiet and center myself enough to make room for listening for others. So some of what I've shared with you today and more will be shared in our Lenten Living Compass devotionals. I encourage you to grab a paper copy, give one to a friend, or even download the free digital version. And to join us as we prepare for this Lent in an act of love to God and love to our neighbors through listening with the whole of our face and the ear of our heart. Amen. So I invite you to join us as we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And thou with me, Lord, 
Also with, with you. you. Let us pray. The Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And lead, lead us, us not into temptation. temptation but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, and the glory forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Andy, Jeff, Kay, and Hector, our bishops, Meredith and Mickey, our clergy, and for all ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially for those we now name aloud or in our hearts. For the many who've been added to the prayers of our church. We pray for healing for Robert Lefebvre and Martha Steiner, Greg and Paula, Bern Benny Kajar, Josh Kellum, safety for Bill and Carrie Kelly, healing for Cindy Kirkendall, Diane Martinez, and Vera Martinez. And for those you have named on our Facebook, hear us, Lord, for your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially those we now name in our hearts or online. Arlene. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who, who put, put their, their trust, trust in, in you. you. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We celebrate this day, the healthy birth of Asher, and the birthdays, anniversaries, and blessings of many, including the birthdays of Miss Ina Williams, Tenna Howard, Kova Davis, Wiley Davis, Kelly Goodwin, Pat Minsterman, Jean Nolan, 
Susan Glenn, and Tristan Goodwin. The anniversaries of Jamie and Claire Rios, Dustin and Felicia Leger, and Tana and Philip Howard, and those you name on loud and in online. Watch over these, your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be, keeping them unspotted from the world. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them with courage or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace pass his understanding. Abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your, your name forever and ever. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have, Have mercy, mercy upon, upon us, us, most merciful, merciful Father. Father. In your, your compassion, compassion forgive, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we, we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through, Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite you to greet one another in the peace of Christ. All right, y'all, we've got a few announcements to share this morning. Um, the first is that it is cold outside, and we hope that you are preparing your people, your pets, your plants, and your pipes. I didn't have to announce that you know it, but what you uh, may not realize, it is too cold for us to be outside worshiping um, the Eucharist. And so, um, sadly and unfortunately, that us, the 11-15 has been canceled. But we do... Um, uh, We'll gather around the fire after Children's Chapel, and from 10.30 to 11.15, we will be here so that you can pick up your Lenten materials, your Lenten devotional on listening. There are plenty for you and to share. You can pick up some Lenten ashes or some alleluias that are written on seed pods that you can then bury in the ground, because this is the day we bury our alleluias. And so we will also have the Liturgy of the Burning of the Palms because we're not going to be here on Tuesday. So please feel free to join us for that um, if you are willing and able. We have tried to mail um, yesterday, mail out ashes, um, and so we hope that they reach you, uh, but we just don't know with the weather conditions. Um, on Tuesday night uh, will be our Shrove Tuesday fun, and we are now online. We will be on Zoom, and it will be streamed to Facebook. And we're going to have some fun as long as we got electricity, and it's going to be online trivia. And y'all, the prizes you do not want to miss. So have a little bit of fun. Make your own gumbo or pancakes or whatever that may be, and join us online for Shrove Tuesday. Ash Wednesday has shifted gears a little bit once more about the weather. We, um, there will be a devotional to help you um, in your homes that will be posted on our YouTube and our Facebook uh, um, for any time you can access during the day. We will also be, um, as long as we can make it here, I'll be here. If you um, would like ashes to go from the portico, you will still be self-administering them, but we will say those with you. Um, and that will be at noon to one or from five to six, uh, road weather permitting. Um, and then we will be celebrating our service um, and uh, invitation to Holy Lent live online at 6.15. So hope that you join us for Ash Wednesday. There are so many different options to join us. Oh, wonderful. I've gotten some people have received their ashes. Y'all, you never know with the mail. I celebrate that and I give thanks for those who do that mail. 
So Lent, um, Lent at Trinity, we've got many different options for you. I want to encourage you to just participate in the things that are possible. You've got Tuesday morning prayer, Wednesday evening prayer, Friday morning um, Bible study, children's chapel. We've got a quiet morning. Every Wednesday night, we're going to be joining St. College Uh, St. George's College in Jerusalem for a study and pilgrimage on land and scriptures. Those are ones you can join with others, and then there will be ones that you can do on your own as well. There are several versions of Stations of the Cross that you can find in your e-news. You've got our Lenten devotional, I have popped up a lot, and Lent Madness. All right, I want to encourage you, learn about your saints of the church. Uh, We had several winners last year who picked the winner of Harriet Tubman, and uh, those were the Chandlers and Maggie Killebrew and Joanne Villanez and myself. And the year before that, um, uh, um, Eileen Hicks and Susan Hazelwood picked Martha of Bethany. And so who will it be this year? Um, In order to play, you got to indicate who is yours. All right, so just join us for all of those different ways for Lent. So beloved of God, I invite you to offer your whole self the whole of your face, the whole of the ear of your heart, and your whole being as an offering to our God. And so walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice for the world. Please join us as we sing.
to love and serve and listen to our Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.